So what all makes a CPU? So we know that we have the central processing unit, which is the brain. We have a control unit, which is a CU. The arithmetic logic unit, which is ALU. The registrars, the accumulator, the ACC, the instruction register, which is IR, the program counter, which is the PC, the stack pointer, which is SP, the cache memory, which are typically L1, L2, and L3, and then of course your clock speed. So I'm gonna go through this video here and talk about the CPU and how a CPU performs in your system and what certain things the CPU does as far as your lanes, L1, L2, L3 cache, uh, your memory controller and the hard drive, just certain things of the CPU. I'm Thomas, welcome to Thomas with Tomology. Let's go ahead and get in here. If you like content like this, I am a tech slash review channel. So I like tech, I love tech, I live tech. I mean, literally, I just, I, I tech has got a hold of me since I was a very young kid. So if you enjoy product reviews and try to stay up on top, I try to get as much as I can of the latest, re the latest products out there. Uh, if anything, you know, I go through tech news and some of the latest tech stuff, how to bypass Microsoft Windows, the, the login, uh, how to optimize your PC. Uh, that is what I do on this channel. So go ahead and hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. The like ain't gonna hurt hurt nothing. Subscribe ain't gonna hurt nothing. This you know your list will fill up over there. Don't worry about that list. You know as long as you don't see it, it's fine. Just go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We're gonna get on into this. So I'm gonna get down to some basics of a CPU. The basics is a CPU is the brain of your computer. It is the main or it is the primary component of a computer. It's also known as a central processing unit. CPUs were designed like a human brain. The CPUs are to execute instructions from programs and applications. These instructions are usually in the form of binary codes, which the CPU interprets and processes to perform tasks on your computer. So say you open up the task menu or you're, you're opening up a program, you just, once you click, it's automatically there. Behind the scenes, the CPU is, is registering the programs that are being opened in the binary form to give you what you see on the screen. The CPU handles all the mathematics uh, operations with inside your CP what's inside your computer, stuff like addition and subtraction. It also has logistic operations such as compression where it compresses the files. So the CPU, a control unit, AKA the brain, it is responsible for the instruction of memory and decodes them to understand what actions are required. Like from when the time you click your, your mouse button, to execute these instructions. All right, so you, you have L1, L2, L3 cash. Cash is like a bank. So you put your money in a bank, right? So every time you go to the store, you know, the, well, the bank gives you a debit card. Every time you go to the store, you run your debit card. Well, you don't have to go back to the bank in order to get your money. You just use your debit card, correct? So the same thing with the CPU. That's where the cash comes in. So the cash is the bank. So what it does, it reduces the time needed to retrieve from the, from the main memory. So it puts a small bit of cache into the CPU, high-speed memory that stores frequently accessed data and instructions. So it stores it there that way when it needs it, it's there and it don't have to take it from nowhere else. Then we have clock speed. The CPU operates at a certain clock speed measured in gigahertz. So you'll see 5.2 gigahertz, 5.0 gigahertz, 4.6 gigahertz. That is how it is measured. No different than your RPM on a car. R RPM, you know, when you got your foot on your gas pedal, you got tw uh, 2,000 RPM, 3,000 RPM. Same thing as with the clock speed. This speed determines how many instructions the CPU can process per second. The CPU is critical for running programs and maintaining tasks on your computer coordinating all the components to ensure everything works together smoothly. So if you have a CPU that is running at two gigahertz, it is going two gigahertz per second to pull that data that it's trying to process because that's why it's called a processor. It is processing the data where if you have one that is four gigahertz, you're going double the speed. So again, five gigahertz, 5.5, whatever, you know, the new 14900Ks, Region 662, the faster your gigahertz are, which is your clock speed, the faster you go. So what all makes a CPU? So we know that we have the central processing unit, which is the brain. 
We have a control unit, which is a CU, the arithmetic logic unit, which is an ALU, the registrars, the accumulator, the ACC, the instruction register, which is IR, the program counter, which is a PC, the stack pointer, which is SP, the cache memory, which are typically L1, L2, and L3, and then of course your clock speed. So I've already went over what the clock speed is, and I already went over what the control unit is. Next we have the arithmetic logic unit, which is the ALU. The ALU is responsible for performing all the math equations of your computer, whether it's addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and logical operations, such as compressions. It is responsible for all mathematics calculations required in your system. Then we have the accumulator, ACC. It stores the results of the operations. So all your operations that you do, that's what it accumulates. Again, it's called accumulator. It accumulates it there. So think of almost like a file cabinet or, you know, Maybe some of y'all kids in a closet. You accumulate in the closet, right? You accumulate things. So basically, the accumulator is responsible for storing operations that need to be done on your PC in its own little storage, which is called accumulator, ACC. Instruction register, IR. It holds all the current instructions being executed. So the minute you tap your, your mouse or, I mean, the minute you turn on your computer, you got so many of the background tasks that are running back there. Well, they got to be executed somehow. So the tasks that are in the instructions are being executed by this part of the CPU. See, the CPU is made of a lot of different things. Next up, we got the stack pointer, SP. Its responsibility is to point to the top of the stack in the memory. So, of course, you don't want to pull anything. Think of, think that you got Jenga, right? You want to pull from the very top as much as you can from the top. The more you pull from the bottom, the more you have chances of it for tipping over. So, you want to grab it from the top, not the bottom. That is what the stack pointer's uh, responsibility inside of a CPU is. Now, you have cache memory. The CPU contains small amount of high-speed memory called cache. Cache stores frequently accessed data and instructions, reducing the time it takes to fetch from the main memory. They are typically multi-level of cache. You got L1 cache, L2 cache, L3 cache, with L1 being the fastest and closest to the CPU. Cache memory is like your bank. Think of, that, think of it like this. Say you get $1,000 this week on your paycheck. You go to the bank and you deposit 400 and you get 600 less cash. That 600 you want to put in the closet because you don't like to use your cash and you want your saving up money. So that 400 is in the bank because you want to use that first. You still have the other 600, right? So think of it like that. So your computer, your computer has 600 or, or whatever your RAM is. So like me, I have 32 gigs of RAM. I have 32 there. That's going to be there. There's my 600. Now, the CPU is going to pull maybe, you know, in this case scenario, that 400, the CPU will pull its own uh, 10 gig, 100 gig, whatever you, whatever it's instructed to give, which there again, you can go within your system, which this video ain't about that. You can go within your system and change your virtual memory. That's where your virtual memory comes in is to increase your cache size, which increases your bank of memory on your PC. Next, we got data bus. That's exactly how it sounds, data bus. What does a bus do? You put people on it and it takes you, takes all them people, you know, if it holds 60 people or whatever, that bus takes it places. That's what data bus does. Data bus carries the actual data that's being processed that you're doing. Then we got bus interface. This is a communications system that transfers data between the CPU and other parts of your computer, such as your hard drive, your memory, your video card, other computers. So if you see something and you're looking at, you know how many bus it is, that's what you're looking for. How many things it can actually take, which we're going to get into a little bit more because uh, that goes into the lanes as well and how everything works with inside the CPU. So now we're going to come to my favorite part of a CPU, which are the lanes. This is what I look for whenever I'm buying a CPU. Uh, depending on the new um, Ultras by Intel, it's going to depend on if I'm going to go to AMD or stay with Intel. But the lanes are, for me, one of the most crucial parts of a CPU. 
the CPU lanes refer to communication pathways to your CPU. So it's the path, just like a road, basically. It's the path that it information takes. So the more lanes you have, the more data you can transfer. So the biggest one is to run all this data at one time, simultaneously, at one time, in a parallel. So your RAM's running at one time, your hard drive's running at one time, your M.2, your video card, the lanes of a CPU give all this information all at the same time. That's just, to me, that's this awesome of technology that we have gone through. In today's computers, PCI Express E slots on your computer, these lanes are individually pathways. So they have their own lanes. So for instance, if you see a uh, PCI Express Gen 4 M.2 drive or Gen 3, so times three, times two, times three, times four. So that either means it has two lanes, three lanes, or four lanes. So now you gotta look at your motherboard and you have to look at each one of your PCI Express slots and see how many lanes it's taken. So last up, we had the CPU thread or threads. You know, multi-threading allows a CPU to manage multiple threads by switching between them rapidly, giving the illusion that multiple threads are running simultaneously. And then you have within the thread, you got what they call hyper-threading. This is Intel's technology that enables a single core to handle two threads simultaneously. So it's say like you have a four core processor. With hyper-threading enabled, it can process up to eight different threads. So four hyper-threading equals eight because it doubles it. it. It tricks the system in thinking there's more. Also with the threads, multi-threading can handle different tasks all at the same time, which is beneficial for multitasking and application designs. So things like video editing, 3D rendering, video gaming, uh, just a lot of multitasking. So hopefully this helped you out or you know educated you a little bit on what a CPU does. If this video gets a lot of response to it, or at least a small good amount, I might go ahead, it all depends, but I might go ahead and, and do, do one on RAM, do one on the video card, hard drives. You know, just the way they actually, the mechanics of them work. So uh, if you like this type of stuff, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Uh, I'm Thomas with Tomology. Thank you for watching.